back in the back in the states, man, we like were romanticized about Africa, you know. Yeah. So like when you come here and and like, the Africans don't see it the same way, oh, y yeah. you're like, yo. Africa. How are you doing? Welcome back to Theo is back straight under the sun of Chigali. I started this channel to share my run story with you guys. And along the way, I'm meeting interesting people who are doing very interesting stuff in Rwanda, like my guest today. He was born and raised in Washington, D.C. He is a former professional athlete in track and field and has competed and won numerous national and international championships. After retiring from the sport, he went on to coach at several prestigious universities in America, including Kono University and the University of Idaho. After reaching great success as a coach as well, he was still hungry for more meaningful accomplishments. After doing some research online, coupled with his unique love for Africa, he landed on beautiful Rwanda. He made the jump, moved to Rwanda, where he founded Imano Academics, a non-profit sports organization designed to promote the sport of track and field by offering professional sports coaching, guidance, and education to random potential athletes in underdeveloped communities. Bringing his years of experience and knowledge to a place that needs it the most. He later applied his professional athlete work ethic to co-found a for-profit company called Imano Sports, despite not knowing anything about the clothing industry at that moment. Today, it is the first and only clothing company in Rwanda that designs and sells high quality sports gear all made in Rwanda. They employ only Rwandans and teach them very valuable skills that make them very sought after employees by other clothing companies. I visited their flagship store and production studio in Remera, where I got a sneak peek under the hood of Imano production. My wonderful people, please help me welcome two times silver medalist in the triple jump, national champion in the track and field, father, pan-African brother, social entrepreneur, founder and CEO of Imano Academics and Imano Sports, Alan Sims. Alan Sims, yes, man. How you nice doing, to meet Theo? You, man. Thank, Thank you, you for man. coming. So, welcome, welcome. How are you doing, man? I'm great, man. I'm yes. great. Man. How's Rwanda treating you? Rwanda has been amazing. Yes. You know, so yeah, man. Yeah, man. Such an awesome country. So, you just know? in short, like, how long have you been in Rwanda, actually? I've been here for about uh, e about a year and a half now. A year and a half. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe a little more. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you you based here permanently? Yep. 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 I'm, I'm I'm based here now, finally. You yes. Know? All right, so yeah, so you know, I know you, but many of my wonderful people who are watching this and some of them who are listening don't know yeah. you. So, just in short, who is Alan Sims? So, how would you <laughs> describe yourself? Well, my name is Alan Sims. You know, Sims, Sims. Oh no, no, it's all good. I, I fucked up already. <laughs> so, man, born and raised in Washington, D.C., um, sports guy, ran a track and field. Yeah. Or what you guys call athletics, you know, here. <laughs> yeah, I did have a whole life basically. Uh, played American football. Mm -hmm. uh, up until I was about, uh, you know, sophomore year high school, yeah. and then ran uh, track. You know, got a full scholarship to the uh, to USC, mm -hmm. Southern California. Yes. You know, was a jumper there. Okay. You know, um, did you know did pretty good. You know, okay. won national championships there. You know, went on went uh, went uh, pro. Okay. You know, and uh, competed at four world championships yeah you know moscow helsinki you know paris you know in the sport yeah uh so after i retired man i got into coaching uh -huh. you know and uh you know within the sport man i coached at you know a few uh, universities you know cornell university yeah uh davidson college north carolina you know just a few around the country you yes. know um 
and after coaching, man, I decided, man, I need to do something different. You know, it's yeah. always been a passion of mine to go to Africa. And, right. You know, and like, man, I do work there, whether it's in sports, you know, coaching, wherever I can do, you know, I always want to be here in Africa, you know. Yeah. So uh, after some research, man, uh, I found that Rwanda was the, you know, you know, the secret of Africa, man. And, and uh, Kigali was amazing, you know. Yeah. So, you know, decided to move here and do some coaching, All right. you know, and then end up and, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur man, and starting a business in the clothing industry. So just in short, on oh, second, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, so you did some research. You, yeah. you came to Rwanda. Now mm -hmm. I know you know Africa has like fifty four countries at the moment. Uh -huh. uh, like why why Rwanda? What was the thing that attracted you to Rwanda the most? Oh man, 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 I was looking at stability. You know, you know, I, I have a family and stuff. You know, so I'm looking at places, man, where I can you know raise a family. Yeah. You know, things like that. So, so I'm looking. To just make sure it's safe and like secure like yeah. i don't have to be fearing rebels man come around the corner <laughs> somewhere or, or you know just yeah. all the crazy things that you hear about africa man i was trying to avoid that you know so you know just on a, a ton of research man and you know to some of the best cities you know mm -hmm. to move to watch some of your videos as well man yeah. about you know how things are like in rwanda i mean you know most african-americans man we tend to go to west africa yeah we look at like nigeria or Mount ghana like yeah, these are exactly, places yeah. to be you know for 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 black americans so, you know, I'm, you know, I looked at Ghana, you know, I didn't visit there, but I did a lot of research on there as well. I was looking at like Morocco and Tanzania, Nigeria, mm -hmm. things like that. And, uh, you know, I think I saw one like YouTube video that was like, you know, the top, you know, 10 places to live in Africa. And like Kigali was like second or third. And I was like, check this place out a little bit. Yeah. So I just came and visit, man, one time to one yeah. of my breaks, man, from coaching and uh, uh -huh. just fell in love with the place, man. Uh, and, and look more like at the m macro kind of sense of it, like why I decide to move out of, you know, America, the U.S. and come mm, to you mm. know, Africa? Like what? Trump. Trump? <laughs> really? Yeah, you know, man, we're, uh, you know, we're we're huge Obama fans, man. And uh, we were really, I'm, I'm not going to say it's all political, man. I'm, yeah, I'm just saying, that's all I like to say a lot of times, man, like, you know. You know, Trump is very discouraging, you know, yeah. but uh, uh, anyhow, man, like I said, it's, it's always been a passion of mine, man, to just, you know, live in Africa, man, and work here and like, yeah. to do something, you know. So um, as a, you know, as the U.S. is going through a bit of shift, man, politically and, you know, not knowing, you know, what's going on and what, you know, the fate of the country and also with a lot of racial issues going on there as well. Yeah, I just yeah, felt like, man, you know, me being, uh, I mean, you know, uh, Afrocentric, you know, yeah. you know, black man. I need to just, man, you know, come to the place where black people are, man, and work with, you know, and try to help and develop here, you know. Yeah. No. You know, America's doing just fine. You know, <laughs> yeah, <that's, laughs> they don't need me, you know. Yeah. So I feel like man, I could do more work here and be, you know, be more beneficial man, here on the continent. Okay, you know? and and when you decided to move here, was was uh, did you get like a lot of encouragement or you know people discouraging you maybe? Nah, man, yeah, I mean, you know, family, I mean, you know, is, is going to be a bit skeptical. Ah, you know, Alan, what's going on, you know, man? Yeah. Do you know what you're doing? Like, this yeah. place had a genocide, I mean, yeah, you know, exactly. like some time ago. So, like, is it safe? Is it good? You know, so they, they raise the typical, man, questions, concerns, you know. But I'm, I'm, I'm 36 years old, man, you know, so I don't know what else, man, they can uh, yeah. sort of stop me. But uh, other than that, I mean, a lot of my friends were super supportive, you know, and a lot of, a lot of black Americans would love to come here as well, man, yeah. and do work, you know, like they're just waiting for somebody like myself to come here, man, and, <laughs> and be successful and see, you know, yeah. that, that it's possible. Show them it's possible. Yeah, man. And <clears throat> so let's just talk a, a bit about your life before you came to uh, mm -hmm. uh, Rwanda. So like, what, what was your life like before you moved to Rwanda, like in the States? I was coaching, man. I was a full-time coach, man, at the... Uh, uh, at a university called uh, Cornell University, yeah. it's an uh, Ivy League school in uh, upstate New York. Man, so I was coaching there, I was coaching jumpers, you mm -hmm. know, that's my passion, coaching, yeah. you know. So I was doing that, man, I wasn't, you know, making any clothes or doing anything like that, <laughs> man. I was just, I was I was a coach, man. And, yeah. and um, you know, in the U.S. you get stuck, man, on a nine to five, uh, it's a type of gig, very easily, yeah. man, comfortably, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, 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 yeah. That's all I was really doing over there, bro. Oh, yeah. Oh, maybe brought out the wine glasses for yeah, the man, look for the water. For it's the, all good. Yeah, man. Okay. And um, and before Rwanda, have you been to other African countries? Uh, yeah, man. Like you know, uh, traveled, maybe lived. You no, know, no, no. Haven't lived anywhere, but I visit. Uh, I was in uh, uh, Egypt. 
you yeah, know, Egypt, so we went yeah. there to just visit, man, and see the pyramids like most, you know, black Americans love to do. Yeah. Uh, I went to Morocco, you know, for sports, you know. I've been a couple of times. Uh, Ethiopia, uh -huh. you know, as well, just to check out the sports scene there, you know, yeah. athletics. But yeah, just, you know what I'm saying, just been yeah, going around, you know. Yeah, one of the interesting things that I find <clears throat> about, you know, like black Americans, because mm -hmm. like I myself, I grew up with like a huge American influence, even though mm -hmm. I've never been to the States, but, you know, yeah. I love the hip hop culture, the yeah. clothing. Right. You know, music, everything was basically like very much American <coughs> influenced. Um, so, but uh, when you take like a black American, you bring them like in Africa, like pure African mm. country, like Rwanda. Yeah. Like what are the contrasts that you really have realized in, mm. in, in, in way of life? Ah, there, there's many. Yeah. You know, like I said all the time, I say um, uh, to my girlfriend, who's, uh, who's also an uh, Ethiopian, yeah. who... Uh, who has a business here as well is that this place really it 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 brings out your true identity yeah. you know it's being a black american be, you know it was in the states we really pride ourselves on being african being african-american mm -hmm. and we look to africa yeah you know so uh when you get here it's a huge huge difference man it is a huge uh, culture shock man <laughs> that really allows you to learn and embrace where you really come from and that's you know that's that, you know that's your american culture mm -hmm. you know because you see all the differences man in, in african culture you yeah. know so so is 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 it's been a bit of shock it's been a huge learning curve yeah I mean, what, you know? what would be the, like the biggest thing that you had the most difficulties with adjusting just trying to uh understand the people yeah i mean you know just just trying to uh, connect with them you know and uh and try to you know like adapt yeah. to their culture you know the for, for me you know being I, you know i consider myself a pan-africanist right man yeah. so i embrace you know a lot of african culture right man when it comes to food and things like that man mm -hmm. and whatever music dance you know yeah. dress the whole night so it wasn't a huge deal there man as i you know was looking forward to, to having more natural and you know food you know fruits and vegetables in my you know plate daily yeah but it's just a matter of just man you know, interacting and connecting with the people has been the biggest challenge I mean, you know yeah. yeah yeah just from simple things like you know uh uh you know as a business owner here tr trying to learn your employees and connect with them and yeah. and bring some of your you know customs man from the west and yeah. think that it's going to work on them man you yeah. know it doesn't work you know it's just you know the things are slower here man the pace yeah. is slower man and i'm like come on let's go let's go let's go you know so, so just things like that just like, sounds familiar you know, yeah, adjustments exactly. man you know and what would be yeah. like the number one thing that you to this day, you still kind of miss from the U U.S. Like it can be big or small. Man, the the U.S. is so convenient, bro. Like yeah. in every way possible, man. Like everything is easy there. Man. Everything yeah. is in front of you there, man. Yeah. Like you know, you, you can pay for things on your phone and get it in one day. Like you know, things <laughs> like that, man. You can shop for, you know, like whatever you want. Like in the stores, like you know, here there's no malls, you know, to find what you need, man. Yeah. So you know, but back in the U.S., you just kind of miss that convenient lifestyle, you know, and. Um, Things are just man, you know, organized and structured, man, in a way to make your life easy. Here, man, this even though the quality of life here, man, I think is uh, much better. Yeah, you know, it's it's it's, it's still a rough life, you know. Yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's a bit tougher. And and how how has like your move to run the like impacted you on a more like a personal level, like mm. a, maybe on a spiritual level, type mm. of thing? Well, it, it goes back to just what I said like before about um, my. Uh, ideology for you know black people and period mm -hmm. you know like i consider myself mm -hmm. i mean you know a black man of african descent right yes but you know people here remind me almost every day that i'm not right <laughs> I'm <a> <laughs> that i'm a, yeah man i'm a zungu i'm american i'm not yeah. you know i get things like i'm a white man stuff like that you know and people yeah. think i have white parents i'm like bro you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah. so so things like that you know have had um uh a yeah. uh, 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 deeper, you know, impact on me, man. It's it's it's, it's been a rude awakening in the sense, you know, because because like I said, we back in the back in the states, yeah. man, we like romanticized about Africa, you yeah, know. Exactly. So like when you come here and and, and like, the Africans don't see it the same way, the, uh, yeah. you're like, yo, have, no, have, no. You, have you had the urge to kind of look up your DNA, like where your your ancestors? I have, come yeah, from? yeah, have? yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I did that be before I moved here, you know, and. Uh, yeah, you know. Do you remember the results a bit? Yeah, were... yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, I'm uh, about seventy three percent, you know, African. Yeah. And well, about yeah, about which side of Africa? West you know? African, man, West of course. Africa, yeah, 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 bro. Yeah, but I'm 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 all West African, and yeah. I have some little you know things in Central Africa and uh, 
uh, North Africa as well, you oh, know, yeah. but just real small percentages. And then, um, yeah, so, you know, Europe is the other 25%, I think, and then I have some Native American in me. I mean, you know, okay. some, oh, yeah. Right. Real yeah. mix. Yeah, 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 man. I'm, 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 I'm pretty global, man, you know? <laughs> DNA, man, but, I mean, you know. Yeah, all right. Um, and when you are, like, one of the things that maybe, like, when you move to Rwanda, um, one of the challenges I always like to ask with people like you who are not Rwandan, mm. um, like, ha, was like the language a barrier? Man, I'm the worst at languages, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, man. So yeah, it it has been a you know serious barrier, and I should have learned Kinyarwanda a long time ago. But yeah. I'm just so stubborn at it, man. Uh, yeah, it's 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 been a challenge. What you know, one of the big challenges also is, is the fact that uh, most people here want to learn English yeah. or they want to like perfect their English yeah so they want me to talk to them in English <laughs> I mean uh, you know what I'm saying yeah. but that's also holding me back you know from learning Kinyarwanda and yeah, it's just easier to just you know yeah you know push them like to just learn my language you know and so but that's even more impressive that you are able to make it here without really knowing the language yeah would you say would you yeah. say that the language is necessary then or not uh, or do you think you would have more success is. if you had to learn the language from the beginning? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, I would have, you know, a, you know, I would have had a easier time, you know, I guess dealing with, you know, my employees and you know, getting around town, things like that. Yeah. And not being, I mean, you know, tricked into like, you know, been paid more money for things. But um, <laughs> yeah. other than that, man, I think that uh, the the folks here, like I said, want to learn English. Yeah. So, I mean, you know me working with them to just you know learn that man has you know had an impact on them as well and and you know yeah. like per, my personal curiosity is always like if someone like you has like a business you have employees mm. and these employees speak like a language you don't understand you know mm. so they can be like chatting in the background and, right and like how right. does that influence you does it have any influence on you yeah 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 it does man it, it used to uh now i'm i'm just looking at man like you know, work, man. I'm looking at, man, yeah. like, you know, quality of work, man. I don't really care what's being said, man. As long as, <laughs> the work I mean, is. yeah, you know, like what I want, man, gets through to them and they, you know, can internalize that, man, and, and yeah. create, I mean, you know, that's, that's all that matters now. So it, it, it goes beyond language, and you know, I would think. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. Let's go into the more the business then of yours. Mm. Like, your brand, Iman, like, where yeah. did you get the, the name actually from? So, just to, to take it back a bit, man, I have a NGO or a U.S. nonprofit, man. It's called uh, Impano Academy Rwanda. Yeah. Right. So this goes with uh, my original plan here was to, you know, be a coaching in sports, you know, and we yeah. develop a a, a a organization that uh, assists the federations or teams in identifying yeah. uh, talented. Uh, athletes all right right so we would go around the the country to districts and villages and do a battery of tests you know uh, a physical test yeah. to 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 find young talent okay you know there's people that have the natural ability yeah right so going along with that uh, that vision and then just like trying to man like find a word that kind of like uh, complements that yeah you know I found uh, in Pano, you okay. know and uh, that you know, loosely kind of translates to like talent and or yeah, you know, sort of gift, you know, gift, things yeah. like that, right? God so that's what I came up gift, with it. Yeah. yeah, 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 exactly, right? So it goes with the sports thing that that. Um, so you started the NGO first. Or you said the company first. NGO came first. Yeah. And even coming here, man, that was the plan was to just you know focus on like a Pano Academy. Yeah. Uh, like, however, like I'm not the the. I'm not the type that, that likes to ask for money or beg for money. Yeah. So I figured I need to make something that's going to yeah, like sustain exactly. this NGO, right? Yeah. So I saw like you know, uh, you know, going to competitions and sports and saying like that the like lack of sport wear, you know, for yeah. you know kids and whatnot, you know, just kind of sparked this idea. Hey man, like why don't we just like you know try to make some clothes, <laughs> you know? So that's yeah. where uh, the 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 brand came from. Is is it was it was built to like you know pr provide man clothes man for kids who couldn't afford them and things like that you know athletes man you know who yeah. you know need to progress a bit you know and then it kind of just went from there and and to more gym wear man active wear and things like that yeah you know? all right i'm gonna have a small break because it's yeah. starting to rain right here yeah, no so problem, let's bro. continue inside all right all right welcome back ladies and gentlemen we are back if you're listening we're now sitting inside mm. um so we we're just talking about the 
the brand and how mm. you started the NGO to kind of yeah. like uh, um, you know help the talent grow and that's how you came to the to the name mm -hmm. and and I also noticed with your logo is the like yeah. A, a yeah. athletics yeah. jumping what is it called again? That's right. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Well, it's it's called it's called high jumping in English, but in Kenyan it is another very yeah. long word to it as well yeah exactly and it is something the sports from the way back in the yeah. centuries and so it was kind of funny that you tapped into that yeah. because in london london's iron did like very tall mm -hmm. and they can jump frequently high yeah. Um, yeah so my question for me that i'm curious about it like have you found any talent that you mm -hmm. you consider like this person girl guy they were like to grow up like in the states where they take sports like super serious like yeah. to like a mass to big success? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we, you know, last year, it was, yeah. well, you know, a bit over a year ago, we have identified a couple of athletes. Yeah. Uh, one in particular, like her name is Martha. Martha. She was a 16-year-old girl, yep, that I found at the, uh, she was competing at one of the competitions here at the stadium. Yeah. And I was like, yo, this girl can be the next, like, Olympian here, you know, yeah. in Rwanda, you know? And uh, she's just, you know, just, just like raw talent, man. Like no technical training, like no skill development, nothing. nothing. So we took her under our wing, you know. We, we, uh, you know, financed her, man. Paid for her school, you know, coaching, trained her up, you know, everything, man. Gave her gear, and and uh, now at 17 years old, she's the Rwandan uh, record holder for jump. for the long jump and triple jump. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we've been training for, you know, training her for about a year now. So she's getting ready for the uh, African Youth Games, mm -hmm. you know, coming up next month, you know, and then hopefully by next year, man, she'll qualify for the Olympics, man, and be like Rwanda's first Olympian, man, in the jumps, you know. So that's the plan, man. Uh, so how does that work? Uh, that, that part of like, so you are when you take someone under your wing, do you have like mm. some kind of training facility here? Or no, no, there? we 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 train the stadium. Um, we 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 get her funding so 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 i have friends back in the states you know former olympians mm -hmm. you know current athletes man who i ask yeah i'm hey guys you guys want to come and sponsor mm -hmm. some kids got here you know yeah. you know, so some like up and coming talent and uh i mean you know so that's what they were her we we found an olympic champion in long jump mm -hmm. uh to 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 sponsor martha you know that's basically man fund everything for her. all right I mean, you know and we supply her with nice gear you know mm -hmm. like our trainer you know, so we do that kind of stuff, man. So she's our first athlete, man, our main one right now. Yeah. And as we grow, we'll take on more kids as well. You know. And, and how many athletes do you have under your wing right now that you're training? We have we have one that we sponsor fully, and we do um, workshops, man, with uh, uh, like like you know now I think we have about like 25 you know athletes like mm -hmm. that training four times a week. Okay. You know, to like develop, you know. And the 20 in Chigali? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Well, I've not seen many of those on the social media, maybe. Yeah, yeah. 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 They're, they're at a school called uh, White Dove. White Dove. Okay. Yeah. yeah White Dove. Yeah. White Dove Girls School. Like yeah. Old girls school? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. We have partnered with them yeah. to, 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 to work with their, their, their students there and train them up. Man. Okay. Yeah. So I guess the NGO is kind of like a, a, a fulfilling job, yeah. I'm, I must say, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Must be, must be one of the reasons why you maybe want to come to Africa, not so much just to make money, but just to come. Right, right, right. Yeah, exactly, man. That was your passion, man, just to do work here, you know? Yeah. So my specialty is in coaching, Yeah. you know? So that's the best way I feel like I can give back, man. It's just to, you know, I was, you know, successful like in my sport, man, mm -hmm. to the best I can be, Yeah. you know? And I've been coaching as well. So I feel like, hey, why not just come here, man, and train kids, man, get them up, you know, train high-level athletes, man, and, yeah. and try to make some Olympians, bro. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And has it, has it been as fulfilling as you have thought before? Yeah, it has. It, 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 yeah, yeah, it's been amazing. You know, like some NGOs, man, like think that if they can't, you know, be big and start big, man, then yeah. it's not, you know, you know, it's having an impact. Yeah. But like for us, it's just been about, man, because we're sports-centered, man, it's about, you know, individual you know, people, man, like, you know yeah. what I'm saying, working with one kid at a time, two kids at a time, and, and really, uh, you know, bringing them in, you know, and not, like, just, uh, you know, giving them some aid here and there, and, and just, you know, leaving to go into the next, you know, village, man, yeah. but when we take on, a, you know, take on a kid, man, we are, you know, sending them through for four to six to eight years down the line, yeah. because the long-term goal is to be champions, man, to, you know, go to the highest level of the sport, you know, and it takes years. 
and and you have like a team around you that does that? Mm -hmm. The Pano team, bro. Yeah. Yeah, 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 man. We are the club, man. We're the you know what I'm saying we're the organization. We're you oh, know you do, you're doing the whole thing basically yeah, as, the, yeah. as a team. Exactly, man. Okay, yeah, yeah. that's I guess that's an interesting concept. I would think yeah. about, like some people working at the NGO side and some working in the store. Nah, side. man, nah, it's all grouped together, man. Like we have some folks back in the states, man, who are helping support and things yeah. like that. You know. We have two websites up, man. You know, for you know the uh, the NGO and one for the, yeah. you know, we, we, because even though they're you know they work together, they're still separate. Like yeah. like you know, so one is for profit, man, and helps fund the mm -hmm. other one that's you know you know non profit. Yeah, exactly. Is 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 it? Do you find like a, this is like a good synergy? That do they complement each other? Yeah, well? yeah, yeah. Or would you be amazing. willing to do another NGO? Let's say maybe some water project for example getting water to the villages and still be able to run in, in, in man. you know man like you know the is it, it's called an ngo man but it works a bit differently man is it works like a, like an elite training center right so yeah. like we're actually man like excluding you know kids as well it's not <laughs> like just let's yeah. just bring all of the poor kids in and yeah. give them all help nah man okay. we are looking for you know specific i mean you know you know, yeah. talent, man, and, you know, youth and trying to develop them, man, you know, so, uh, you know, that's where, like, we need, like, you know, the brand yeah. and its benefits to help support that because, you know, not like people are going to, you know, support the NGO, like, that excludes kids, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they want to see uh, as many oh, kids yeah. as possible yeah. that you're, you know, you know, benefiting a lot, so yeah. it's kind of different in a sense, you know. Um. So, but one of the things that you realize when you come here in, in Africa and in people, mm. especially like in rural areas and you are, you are helping out kids, poor kids, poor family communities, mm. is that you are seen as this like great giver, basically, mm. and you are treated like on this high platter, like, you know, right. especially you, they think you know, you're like a Mzungu. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Do, do they also ask you money like how they do the other Mzungus? Yeah, I mean, I mean, like I said, man, we're a bit different, man. Yeah. And like, therefore, like, you know, like a lot of, you know, other like organizations have failed to kind of partner with us, man, because we're not all about, you know, raising the big dollars, man, and trying to, yeah. I mean, you know, having all these kids and give, you know, mm -hmm. to all these different groups here. Nah, yeah. man, like, be, be, because personally, I don't feel like, man, like, that's what Africa needs, man. Like, Africa yeah. needs a bunch of aid, man. Like, yeah. they need, like, real development, bro. So in the sports world, man, it's kind of like, if we can develop, you know, champions, then those champions are going to be able to have a trickle down effect on the whole, yeah. you know, like the global population, right? Exactly. Yeah. We know how sports could be a unifying factor, man. Like, yeah. you know, for countries, man. Like, you know, especially countries that have a past like Rwanda, man. Yeah. You know, we have athletes in the Olympian. I mean, yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or imagine if like a Rwanda team makes it to FIFA World Cup, bro. Yeah, like exactly. the whole country is going to be one, man. Like, yeah, there's not going to be any more tribal issues going on, whatever, you know, the issues that countries have, you know, yeah. if your team makes it to the top, bro, that's going to be like the biggest thing in the world. So that, that's how sports, you know what I'm saying, has yeah. that effect, right? So that's kind of like the, 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 the mindset, man, that I have, you know, you know behind yeah. this organization is just like, let's try to really, man, like develop champions, man, and then watch it, watch it grow. you know what I'm saying, spread throughout the whole population, yeah. man, you know. And, and, and so, but how do you deal with the fact that, you know, when you're coming, you're doing this kind of like, you know, good work, not mm -hmm. a lot of people are doing it like, like you are doing. So, and probably in America, it was just like a normal athlete, normal guy who's doing, just having a normal life. And here you're like this extraordinary guy because you're getting, maybe doing something that you maybe in the States you could not have done. Yeah. So how do you deal with those kind of like attention of people like seeing you like this, putting you on this high platter basically, mm -hmm. doing something for you maybe it's just simple? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think that, like, you know, in the beginning, man, people, you know, kind of, you know, looked at, oh, okay, here's another American, you know, Mzungu guy here, like, you know, saying, what can we get from him? But I think that most people, you know, have a guy used to be now, you know, and, you know, they realize, okay, he's not about to be, you know, spreading dollars around, yeah. so let's, you know, let's leave him alone, you know. Okay. I don't get bothered that much anymore, man. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I think that eventually they see you as, you know, I mean, you know, you know saying, one of, you know, just, just, just one of the the the, the kind of foreigners that, that's just here, and like they're not, you know, here just like temporarily to just give a bunch and then go, you know. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, yeah, I don't really see that man as a, you know, as a thing anymore, man, of yeah. the like musical factor, you know, in a sense, yeah. you know. So, do, do, do you feel like you have now more also like the cultural insights? Do you understand them better now because when you came here, people like mm -hmm. seeing you different. 
and now you've been here a year and a half. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I, I feel like I like understand what people here have went through. Yeah. Right. And uh, and and how like I relate to that, man. And how I need to be a bit more patient. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're probably trying to build here yeah. to be more like understanding, man. About like you know what what the focus is for people here. You know yeah. and. It's, and like for me, it's, it's it's different, man. But it's the same as in the states, man. Just that people here are like on survival mode, man. Mm -hmm. So survival mode, man, means you know get what you can, you know, get what you can right now. Like like you know what I'm saying? Like you know, I used to complain about a lack of vision, you know, here. Like with people, you know, like I'm trying to get like you know locals to come and join like what I'm doing, mm -hmm. but they got to see down the line for us, right? Like, yeah. you know, and if they can't see down the line, like, then they're like, no, nah, I don't want a part of it, man. I want what I can get right now, bro. Yeah. So I've had to like really learn how to deal with that, man, because that was a shocker to me, you know? Yeah, that's uh, like a common issue that I hear from people who have come from the West. Mm -hmm. that, that they come here and they have this grand vision. They're like, yo, mm -hmm. I have like a million dollars I want to spend in this country over mm -hmm. here, for example. Mm -hmm. But if you cannot spend like $10 today, people are not going to look at you. Yeah. They're like, nah, no, you're yeah. serious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but how... And for you working with local people, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, you only employ local people, mm -hmm. is, is, uh, what I've read. Yeah. And so you, you must have had this issue come up oh, yeah. many, many times. So yeah. how do you deal with it, you know, coming with your like Western vision, mm -hmm. big vision, and people are just looking to survive the day, basically? Yeah, yeah, man. It's, it, it's just, it's the constant work of trying to just convince them to just like think bigger. You know, just like, you know, think on a grander scheme here, man, and uh, and try to just, you know, lure them in, like, with, you know, certain, like, benefits, man, and what they can get right now to just keep them thinking long term, right? It's, I mean, you know, you know, it can be, you know, having employees get, like, free clothes, like, things like that, man, or, or like, having them meet, like, some of the important people, like, who come to Apano to shop. Things like that, man. It gives them a sense of like belonging, man. And that like they're actually like involved in the business, you know. And they're actually like responsible for making these clothes for these, you know, COOs or government people or whatever. Like you know, exactly. they're just working in, and they they they're starting to feel like you know they're they're really involved in this, man. It's not like just some Zungo company yeah. that like they're actually part of it as well. And also giving them options of ownership into the company, things like that, man. You know, that's caused them to start thinking a little bit bigger. You know, you know, with some employees, I, I you know, I make them watch, man, like YouTube videos, man, of like, I mean, you know, Adidas and Nike and other companies how they got started, man, and what it takes, man, to be, you know, to be successful. Just, just trying to give them things that, man, like they haven't really got before, man, that like, they're just not used to, and it works for some, and other ones it, it doesn't work for, man. Like other of them have different, you know, different. I mean, you know, visions that they want to do in life, you know, which is cool, you know. And, and what are the other, like, grand issues that you have come across when you, you know, when you're employing uh, local people? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, look, on the flip side of what I just said, man, is, you know, when they don't feel like, you know, they're part of the company, they don't work as hard. Like, oh. you know, like, <laughs> they're not as invested in what, you, you know, and how you would like them to be. And uh, that sucks because that leads to things like, you know, stealing and lack of commitment or just, you know, running off t to the next, you know, uh, company that you know, offers them, you know, a bit more money or whatever, like, you know. Uh, as foreigners, man, we get treated a bit differently, bro, with employees, man. Like, I realize, you know, most of the, uh, the, 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 the other brands or factories that you work with you know, who are locally run, uh, they seem to have a different or better kind of treatment, man, like from the local employees, okay. you, you know? It, it's almost a sense like, you know, they work harder like, and longer f for a local boss, like, you know, saying, than they would a foreign boss, right? Man, a foreign boss is like, they want to keep, man, with the labor laws, right? Like, you know, eight to five is what we work, and that's, you know, that's pure. And if you don't abide by that, man, we're like, we're taking you to court, like, you know? Yeah, yeah. Where, like, local bosses, can get them to work from seven in the morning to nine at night yeah. and it's never a problem. I mean, it's the things like that, right? So when I'm recruiting or hiring from, when, when people, you know, it's kind of me from different companies like that, mm -hmm. like, it, it's amazing. I'm like, hey man, I like, used to work from eight to eight. You know what I'm saying? And, and you can work that, you know what I'm saying, for me and I'll pay you overtime, mm 
<laughs> and it's like, nah, man, we want eight to five, like what the law says, you know, and really? yeah, bro. So things like that, yeah. man, have been a shocker, bro. I've been so like, good, yeah. yeah, man. And I mean, you know, so things that you have to learn here, man, is that you're going to be treated differently. Yeah. And as simple as that, man. So if you want to live here and do business here, bro, you got to get with the program, you yeah. know, so, you know, for, for, for me, it's like, hey, I mean, you know, like it is what it is. Exactly. So it has not deterred you anyway to kind of take you. Nah, from man. Nah, you man. Nah, man. I'm all about adapting, bro. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm not going to live in some fancy world, man. Like, you know, I got to adapt, man, if I want to survive. And I'm committed to Africa, man. Like, yeah. so it's just what it is, man. All, you know, so all I could do is just get what we can, man, you know, out of it, man. And, and just, just, just keep with the focus, man, of, you know what I'm saying, of like building, you know what I'm saying, yeah. and like developing here in Africa, right? Yeah. So, so what that means for the company is, you know, like we're, we're all learning, you know, the, these new skills together, right? You know, sort of making these like sportwear clothes, right? Yeah. It's a group effort, man. You know, so what the tailors that we have and this new knowledge that they get, man, like they can keep with them forever. You know, so I can leave and go home or whatever. And these guys will still be able to make sportswear clothes. Yeah. And just given that alone, like, you know, if they go out to the factories, you know, the, the big production factories, yeah. they're not learning anything, bro. Like, they're just stitching. They're just labor lines, man. But here at the Pano, we're actually teaching, man, how to actually, you know, do something that's not been done in Africa, bro. And that's actually, like, design, you know, I mean, you know, gym clothes, team yeah. wear, you know, understanding fabrics, man. Like, the whole, not like, my whole group knows what that means man so they can go you know anywhere like out man you know like around the world man they have a certain value that's placed on them you know because so they worked here but it, i can say that you're really passionate about the subject yeah, you know, that's what probably the reason why you entered it mm. but like why is it that you ended it like okay you're not, you're not too late but you know mm. have you done this before like in, in, in this kind of <laughs> business style in your life nah man nah man i was a coach man yeah. i i've i've never I never even like thought about being an entrepreneur. Yeah, you know, so what, that, what has brought you to kind of like become then an entrepreneur and have this grand vision that you maybe need? Or thought you had, maybe you had any it's, it's, dormant inside? Well, you know, man, it's just a bit of problem solving, you know, right? So like, there's a problem, you know, like there's nowhere to buy, you know, quality sportswear here, you yeah. know, in Rwanda. So like, you know, you know, how can we solve this problem and also, you know, make it in a way where, uh, like you know, it could be like sustainable, man. For my living here, like I need you know to live as well, right? Yeah. And at the same time, tying the 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 NGO part of it, man. As as far as you know, giving back, right? So, yeah. you know, ask the question all the time. And you know, am I helping Africa with this, man? Am I helping the you know some people here with this business? You, you know, like or, or, you know, or am I just you know taking from them and going somewhere else? You know, because that's what a lot of foreigners do, bro. You yeah. know, they come here, they just. They take from here and, and they take that bag and they go you yeah, know, exactly. somewhere else, you know, back to their country, man. So I always, I want to make sure I'm staying focused on that, man. And that's this uh, giving back, uh, you know? Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm kind of like uh, curious now that you know you've been here, you've been adapted, you are like, how, how, um, like you are staying in the business side, like how is the business now that go, you know, that you kind of like, I guess you've leveled up, you know, you, you, you had the beginnings of the, you know, the startup problems have right. been going right. on for like over a year now. Mm. Um, so yeah, is the business now kind of like generating enough money or is it still kind of like investing into the business to become the grand thing you want to? Yeah, I mean, the, uh, yeah, the business is kind of, you know, taking off on its own, man. Yeah. Like, you know, it's not like, you know, it's huge, like profitable thing right now, but it's, it like sustains itself, you know, it's, which is good enough. You, you know, it's just, so, so you're breaking even basically. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. how would you say the projection, like now that you look back at it, like how long did it take for you to kind of like break even? Like from the moment you started like investing and maybe buying? Maybe about six months, man. Honestly, man, because we, we spent a, like, you know, maybe, f you know, three to four months in a dormant, man, period of just trying to learn learn this thing man to yeah. you know learn many things man like learn the actual business yeah. of you know you know what I'm saying garment manufacturing yeah. uh you know fabrics you know patterns you know all kind of stuff man that the fashion industry needs we had to learn that first mm -hmm. and then we had to learn uh, the retail business you know what I'm saying how to like you know make a store man things like that yeah. you know and then learn the culture you know here yeah. man and like you know do some research into you know what people are doing here in sports or sportswear what's available like around here so things like that we had to spend some time learning but at the same time once we started making uh clothes yeah. and start hanging it up on the wall like in our shop because at one point it was just one room and it was our machines mm -hmm. and my desk i mean you know what i'm saying so like we'll just like put some clothes up 
And, and one day I decided to just put a banner up, you know, it was outside that said like Impano, you know, yeah. sportswear, things like that. And we just started getting, you know, we was walking customers, oh, what is this? Oh, you guys make this here? We're like, yeah, but it's not for sale, you know, we just, yeah, we make it here. Oh, wow, I want to buy this. Really? Oh, oh, yeah, okay, fine. Yeah, okay, it's, it's, it's 5,000 francs, you know? So yeah. we start like going that way. Like, it wasn't like a, you know, it's like a planned launch, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Because you know, while we're still learning and trying to perfect stuff, man, people wanted to buy stuff. Yeah. So the one thing I kept, you know, focusing on was customer service. Like, yo, listen, guys, uh, you know what I'm saying? You can buy this now, but understand that it's not, you know what I'm saying, to the centers that, that like it should be. Like, you yeah. know, it's according to, you know, to where I come from. So I'm going to offer you guys a one, uh, one year guarantee where within the year, if there's any problems with it, man, it, it like tears, rips, holes, or it's too big, too small over time, you bring it back, man, and we'll give you a new one or we'll try to fix it. I mean, you know, so that's how we kind of, man, countered, man, like our like potential, <laughs> you know, bad, you know, clothes and things like that, man, because we've been learning, man. And like I said before, like we didn't bring in, you know, like you know, any like specialists from China or India, you know, in the West, man, to to help us, man, you know, learn it faster. We, man, we use YouTube, man, Google, man, and, and yeah. like, you know, I have some, yeah, yeah exactly. I have some clothes from the U.S., man, and I bring here and, and we'll just like, man, like deconstruct it, man, and yeah. figure it out and then put it back together again, like in our own way. Yeah. So that's how we kind of learned this thing, man. So like as we made clothes like that, then people like wanted to start buying it. Yeah. You know, we had to figure out how to do labels, how to do, you know, printing, mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff, man. So, so screw that way. Yeah. Uh, I remember like also when you're doing this kind of clothing, you know, made in Rwanda, like the government of Rwanda is like, now, at least for the last two years, right, according to my logic, they are really heavily invested in made in Rwanda. Yeah. Right? Have mm -hmm. you been able to kind of like profit from that kind of trend and also from a big, yeah, bigger scale, like the growing economy of Rwanda? Yeah, 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 bro, yeah, bro man. The, the, the government has been super supportive, man. Like, you know, with the policies made in Rwanda, like, it's, it's been it's, it's been a blessing to have that man because one of the biggest like challenges was uh, uh, importing the fabric. It's super expensive outside, like you know, so it's hard to pay you know man for that you know expensive fabric. Be, we're trying you know to you know you know uh, adhere like to our you know you know our mantra of being like affordable quality sportswear. You know, so that fabric is super expensive. So, so at the same time, having to like, you know, tack on 55% taxes on the fabric and the raw materials, yeah. it just makes it completely, like, man, like unaffordable, man. And, 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 and it's probably, you know, just some reasons why people haven't done it already, you know, is that, you know, on top of the fabric, the taxes, and then now you're selling clothes for, you know, like 100 bucks a shirt, yeah. you know, just to be like sustainable. So, you know, the, the government, man, enforcing that made it around the policy, man, giving us like tax breaks on, Textiles, raw materials has, I mean, you know, has definitely, definitely helped us out, bro. You know, and I think that, I, I think that most people would think that that benefit is only for like large industries, man. But it's not, man. I think that, you know, once you're doing something good here, like in the government, man, sees that, man, it sees sees this real benefit, then you know they help you out, man. Yeah. You know? so, so and how how has it been kind of like interacting with the Rwandan uh, government here, especially mm -hmm. for you being a foreigner, and not maybe. Understanding all the, the rules on the day was the same. Yeah, man, is is so the one problem is that it's difficult to find all the information like laid out as far as what you need and what benefits there are. Is that's that's been a challenge, man, because it, it caused you to go around from office to office asking the same questions and everybody's passing you along here and there, man, because maybe it's something new and not like everybody is informed about you know, all the information that's required. So that's been a challenge, you know what I'm saying? Like going to RA or RDB or, you know, Minicom. It's just trying to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like understand, hey, what do you guys offer? Where is it laid out? You know, we're trying to do this. So yeah, that, that in itself took a good six months to really understand and get, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know, get right. So I hope that, man, in time, you know, like that kind of information is more, you know, out there and available, man, rather than us have to you know, track down people, you know, to get it. And, and last moment, maybe more about you, you know, like you coming mm -hmm. here, taking this you know, big jump basically in investing into a country like Rwanda. Right. Um, you, you have a family, you said, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have kids? Yeah, so I ha yeah, man, I got uh, two kids in the States yeah. and I have a one, uh, one uh, infant here, man, one year old. 
Yeah, so, yeah, so, so it's an even bigger step for you because mm-hmm. you have like this family that's just kind yeah, of like uh, supporting. So what did you, like, where, where do you get the, 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 the motivation from day to day to still keep going on this path that is really not easy, yeah. it's not convenient, yeah. it's because you know better, you travel the world. Yeah, man, the, the motivation comes from them, man, you know what I'm saying, from my kids, man. Like, you know, just, man, building something, you know, like a pass down for them and, and, and me taking this sacrifice, man, of, of coming here, you know, and doing this, man, is, yeah. is you know, the, 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 the whole goal is to, to be able to, you know, give it back, you know what I'm saying, and pass it along, like, to these guys, you know. Yeah. So just making sure, man, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm being smart about my decisions, man, and being patient, man, and also, with a vision to be, you know, yeah. you know, since uh, um, successful at it, you know. So uh, we'll keep it at that, and just maybe some final remarks on, like, if you be talking to someone like you who's mm-hmm. watching this video, or listening to this podcast, one thing to make a jump like yours, but they have like restraints, you know, mm-hmm. family, you know, finance, uh, other mm-hmm. conveniences that they have in their lives, but they kind of like stay on the fence and jumping. Like, what kind of advice would you give them to to, to go through it? Man, to just plan. Plan it out, man. Do your research, man. And once you feel, you know, super confident about it, mm-hmm. take the risk. Take you know what I'm saying? Risk. Yeah, I mean, take the chance, man. Mm-hmm. Like, you only live once, you know? Yeah. So just, you know, just be patient with your study, like your research, man. Like, just understand what you're doing and why you want to do it. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you know so make sure, man, it is a passion of yours, man. Be, you know, because when it's a passion, man, you'll do it freely, man, with no money. You see what I'm saying? And that's the key behind it, man. And, and like you do it 100%, man. So, so I, and I believe it's hard to fail, you know what I'm saying? When you give something so, you know, so much, you know, so much of you, yeah. you know what I'm saying, to it, you know? So uh, being in Africa, man, is, is, is learn the culture, but learn the ways here, but just being patient, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Being patient, man, and being focused, yeah. you know? Thank you, Alan. Hey, this is very informative, man. Thank you, my friend. No problem, man. Thank you so Thank much, Leo. Yeah. If people want to follow it. you, where can they find you? Where can they find your store? Man, uh, Instagram, man, Epano Active, you know. Uh, we have a website, Epano Sports, you know, dot com. Uh, we, have our, we have our flagship store here, man, across from uh, Amahona Stadium, you know. So we're here, man. You can find us everywhere, All right. you know. You heard your first, you guys. Go follow Alan and Emmanuel Sports. Sir, thank you. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up. Check out Alan Sims details in the description of this video. And I'm thinking about doing something new with this channel. I wanna, every time when I interview a guest, I want to give away one of his products. So let's say if this video gets, what, let's say, 50 likes, I'm going to give out a Imano clothing wear, something like this, for free to one of you guys. All you have to do is like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and follow me on Instagram, where I'll be giving away one of these clothings of Imano Company. All right. Thank you very much for watching. I would like to see you in the next video. Muramuche.